starting time for serial numbers 1 through 6 will be 0600, and for 7 through 12, 0640. Frequencies we must guard, 48.9, 50.2, 49.2, 49.1. This will be the final phase of our training maneuvers, gentlemen. Lieutenant Rice, you understand your landing has a dual purpose. Yes, sir. One, we act as a diversionary force. Number two, test the accuracy of the new radio locator. In a real war, gentlemen, especially in the tropics, you will find that one rice paddy or stretch of jungle looks like another. And yet, if our ground and air troops are to work together, it's important that they can pinpoint each other's position at every moment. Now, Lieutenant Rice with us and several platoons ashore are making the final tests on a new beacon and radio grid system, which is beginning to look like it could be the answer. We'll be lifting off in 40 minutes. Dismissed.
Everyone get your squad in and cover the right flank! Message from umpire, sir. You're to assume the maps were inaccurate. You're lost. This could be any one of a dozen similar Asian villages. First reading. Zero, four, four degrees, sir. You've encountered heavy resistance, Lieutenant. You're lost and separated from your helicopter reinforcements. Master Beacon. Two, three, zero degrees, sir. Flying Fox, Flying Fox, this is Red Fox, come in. This is Flying Fox. Our locator shows us at Bridge Charlie, Box 55, over. This is Red Fox. If you uh, fly in and land on the same grid, you'll put the aggressors in a squeeze between us. Over. Roger, Red Fox. We're on our way. Out. What do you think of the new system, Corporal? We're taking overseas? So far, all week. We've pinpointed our position every time, sir. Second squad in. We've already got them flanked. Yes, sir. Lieutenant. Like it or not, you've got a talent for this. Time you should make a very good field commander. In other words, I'd make a good killer. Isn't that like telling someone they'd make a good horror captain? at the grog shop. Mm, I'd rather have you in my parlor. Welcome, said the spider. You got anything to drink? In the kitchen. I'll have uh, scotch and water. What, uh, did something go wrong on the maneuvers? Same old story. The uh, good guys won again. Oh, and that new invention you're testing, or whatever it is. Well, that's fine. Jim April's taking the results overseas tonight. Mm, great for him. Well, that's the way my company commander put it. After all, what red-blooded young Marine officer doesn't want to get over there and fight, huh? To get blooded. That's a term we use, kind of a mystic baptism. Is the same thing bothering you? Killing. Hey, you like my outfit? I got it last week in Los Angeles. Well, it seems to do everything it's supposed to. Lynn, that's, uh, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Well, that's a part of it. It's, uh... 
It's this feeling about killing. It keeps getting stronger. <laughs> well, with the pressure of wrestling with the idea of changing your career, maybe your whole life, uh, <laughs> Lynn, uh, maybe it's a way a man's built, but I don't like to sound, well, crude, you see? Mm -hmm. Did you hear what I said? Mm. You're going to be crude. All right. You want to make love? Do I want to? Or will I? Will you? Destination, orange blossoms and a ring. Suppose I said no. Sorry. I had a foolish idea that you kind of thought of marriage. Helene, I don't know if I'm really serious or uh, if I need you the way a man needs an aspirin. Why don't I fix you another drink for you to decide? Lynn, I'm trying to explain to you that I don't know if I'm seeing it because I like you or if it's because I like the way you walk. And one thing I do know for sure is if I keep seeing you, I might as well go out and buy one of those rings. You know, uh, men want to get married, too. And it always scares them. Well... I won't be seeing you, not for a while, anyway. And maybe never. I had to level with you. Oh. Well, it's, uh, it's too bad that we didn't get to know each other. I mean, you've been so busy retreating, we never really had a chance, just alone. Sitting quietly, talking. Oh, Bill, come on. Don't we owe each other that, at least? One quiet evening. We may find out all sorts of interesting things. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose that's possible. How's it coming? Oh, I, uh, I tried water on it, but it, it won't come out. I think I'm uh, going to have to soak them. Here. 
Um, can I get you some more wine? No, thanks. I just fill my glass. Shall I uh, check the steaks? Hmm. Uh, before they boil over, too? Oh, but you won't. Is that it? Hmm. Well, actually, I, I like that outfit, too. That's nice. I wonder if you really do. Tell me something, Bella. Is, um, is marriage really the problem? Or is it something else? I wanted to see if your hand was shaking, but it isn't. Oh, that is bad. Well, actually, I'm finding out some interesting things myself. Such as? You're a bitch. Mm. Yes, well, I suppose that marriage is really, really a problem for some people. And this thing uh, about killing... It, well, it couldn't be that you're imagining the bullets hitting you. Hmm? Well, I'm grateful, Miss Schiller. You would have been a big mistake. Uh, suppose that I said that you wouldn't have to marry me. I promise you don't have to. That's fine. One of us is lying, Lynn. Let's find out who. Bill, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. No, you can't. Please. I didn't mean it. I didn't. No, don't. Do you mind? Bill, couldn't you stay a while and we could talk? Something. Coffee's boiling over, Miss Schiller. Lieutenant Rice? That's right. First Battalion, 5th Marines? Yeah. We're trying to track you down for about three hours, sir. At El Toro Air Station at 2130. You know why? I heard something about a special overnight assignment, sir. If you take the Coast Highway, you can just make it, sir. Well, thanks a lot. I don't know what this is all about, but I was told to get up here in the double. Uh, don't you have any baggage, sir? Well, they uh, caught me at the West Gate at Pendleton. Said I had 40 minutes to get up here. If it's an overnight assignment, I can get a hold of a razor somewhere. It's an overnight flight, Lieutenant. 
By tomorrow afternoon, you'll be in Southeast Asia. If I remember correctly, you, Lieutenant Harris, and Lieutenant April all field tested the new radio locator equipment. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Sign here, Lieutenant. Flight 113. Have your orders ready, please. Calling Matt, Pacific Flight 113. Have your orders ready, please. Now, this logs the classified documents over to you. It is to remain in your physical possession at all times. Uh, sir, I thought Lieutenant April would... Lieutenant April just checked into the Naval Hospital. Influenza. You're replacing him. Quite a break for you, Rice. My lieutenants would give their eye teeth to get to Southeast Asia. Bill, you're going to be met at the Hanan Airport by an Army Major Dennis. He'll arrange helicopter transportation to the fighting zone headquarters at Pengdang. Corporal, he's checked all the way through now? All clear, sir. Good. These orders were for Lieutenant April. The Major's endorsed them over to you. Check it. Last call, Pacific Flight 113. Last call, Pacific Flight 113. I'm sorry we couldn't reach you at your quarters, but you can arrange an issue of clothing over there. They're waiting for you, sir. All right. Good luck, Bill. Thank you, Captain. Well, Lieutenant, keep your head down. Over there, the bullets are real. for your dispatch pouch. Uh, sir, my order stated that I was to deliver this Lieutenant, person. I can't waste helicopter space to the fighting zone on tours for the edification and amazement of every junior officer who comes through here with a packet in his hand. Now, Captain D's accredited to Magstaff. Delivery to him satisfies your orders to the letter. I think I can get you out of here on a return flight by 4 o'clock. This is none of my affair, of course, but after a journey of 7,000 miles, I think the lieutenant would like at least to see our city. The original orders were for Lieutenant April, is that correct? Sir, if you'll check Major Atkins' endorsement here, you'll find that I'm replacing Lieutenant April because I have identical experience with a radio locator. Now, these documents contained here are merely diagrams for modifying the standard backpack radio into a signal beacon. But I've used the system, and the whole idea of sending along a platoon commander as courier is so that he could pass on what he learned during those field tests, sir. Mm-hmm. And I imagine you're anxious to get up there and have at him. Yes, sir. We'd all give our eye teeth to get up there. Captain, how about taking a Marine to Pangdong for me? You ready, Lieutenant? <laughs>
this point, they could be guerrilla activity. Understand? You know her, Lieutenant? All of an hour. You'll be sorry. <laughs> Pendong, the uh, rebels control most of the country. The uh, vegetation seems to be getting a lot thicker now. In such terrain, ground troops and air support often become separated and lose sight of each other. This is why an effective radio locator system is so badly needed. We try to simulate those conditions during our test at Pendleton. We've tried many such devices. This would be a radio grid so that ground and air commanders could read it as easily as street signs. I am at 5th and Maple. Land your troops at 7th and Main Street and intercept the bandits. Well, you seem to know something about Main Street. I was a student in your country. An honorary American lieutenant, also a real tiger. A couple of our guys owe their skins to it. We break in! We're getting hit, sir. Can we get out of here? Keep your eye on those gauges. There's an oil spot back here, sir. Anything on your pressure gauge? Somebody give my toolkit. It's under the seat. Where? Under the seat! Transmission oil reading. 140. Climbing. Oil pressure down to 20. Take, Kramer. Tell me, take. Pilot says hurry. Oil temperature up to the peg now! Then this thing won't hold us all, it gets much hotter! Papers you're carrying. This is fuel to toss on a bird if it should get hairy. You can burn your papers at the same time. I got you. Look, man, we made about 18 miles from the place where we were hit. That means it gives us a pretty good chance of going down unobserved. 
Keep your eyes open, but stay loose. Mayday, mayday. Chopper down, chopper down. This is Marine Chopper Yankee Lima 36, down 60 miles out of Henang en route Peng Dong. Do you read? Do you read? Our last bearings were Lusang 110 degrees, Hanong 225 degrees. Do you hear me? You're being made welcome. Yeah. Like my family welcomes a Thanksgiving turkey. Mayday, mayday. If anybody reads, we will continue signals at daybreak tomorrow, as long as our battery power holds. Marine helicopter, Yankee Lima 36, out. Did you get anything? The Army's Delta installation answered me, faintly. Were you able to get any of their message? That we were one by one and fading. It's gonna be getting dark soon. You men number yourselves clockwise from Captain D here. Even numbers sleep till midnight, odd numbers till dawn. Now, you guys don't get jumpy and start shooting. There's, there's no point in advertising we're here. Turn the sack out. I, uh, I'm resting. Oh, I uh, thought you might be able to use a clean shirt. I had an extra one in my duffel bag. Thanks a lot. Oh, I'll send you a bill for it. <coughs> no man can sleep his first night in a combat situation, Lieutenant. It shouldn't worry you. You simply react to a new situation. It has nothing to do with bravery. I was in your state, California. I could not sleep at night for fear of the next day's drive on your freeways. Our chances here are at least equal to that. Fortunately, at that time, I was chosen to attend the missionary school here. Then later, I received a scholarship to the United States. How old were you when your father died? Nine years old. Cholera came again two years later, and my mother and both my sisters died, too. Without your missionary, I would have starved, I suppose. His name was Dr. Selwyn, a most unusual man. In my family, staying alive was so much a struggle, there was little strength left over for luxuries like thinking and talking. But when I met the doctor, only nine years old, and I listened to the first story of my life, how Americans, only farmers like ourselves, learned magic words like liberty and independence. And grew into a giant by saying them. Is that, uh, is that the reason why you came back here when trouble started? Of course. I tell myself I'm going to be the Thomas Spain of my country. Or the Jefferson, or the Benjamin Franklin, or Nathan Hale. Well, if you could see your way clear to being Lafayette, I might even try for George Washington.
me. I'm gonna burn the chopper. Any of us. Looks like we're it, sir. If we had some tracer ammo to get those chopper tanks. If I'd have been born a girl, I wouldn't be here, sir. Now, there's heavier cover over here if you want to follow me. Good morning, ladies. Anyone speak English? Parlez-vous français?
Bonjour, mademoiselle. Comprenez-vous? Look, honey, I've just been through that peekaboo bit back in the States. Now, word of honor, I'm really not interested this time. Well, I'll say one thing for you. Got a pretty good bottom. Of course, I... I haven't had much luck with that sort of thing lately. This other one, she really fooled me. Or maybe she didn't. Maybe she didn't. You know the problem with me? I'm an idealist. I keep looking for something special, a perfection. And you keep looking and Keep looking. <sighs> nice, huh? The way you and I can level with each other. <laughs> Must be getting better. You really are something. Thank you. You must know one word. You, you don't really speak English, do you? I speak some English. Well, thanks for warning me. The village of Lingso is about half a kilometer. Can you walk? Something. <laughs> oh, thank you. Are you, uh... Are you sure those people are on our side? I'll answer you this way. For allowing me to help you, they could be killed. Yet, they do not stop me. Give some rest. You go back to your house, don't look at him. Go back. Come on. Until tonight. Then my uncle will take you on his boat to a larger village where there's a government agent. Let you sleep now.
I could see the hammer back. Be better on safety now. <laughs> Farm family helped me. They told me you were here. Oh. You all right? Flashburn. Well, they searched for you. I circled back under the chopper, opened the belly fuel line. You got the chopper? Our tanks exploded almost immediately. With the loose oil, there was smoke which hid me. Good boy. By the way, this village you found is named Ling Su. Yeah, I know. Well, I, uh, I met a girl. Oh? Yeah, believe it or not, she speaks English. She uh, helped me and brought me here. An educated woman? I guess so. It's highly unusual in such a small village. Well, she's arranging for her uncle's boat to... Say, is there a larger village downstream? Yes. With a government agent, maybe? Well, the reports I've seen, this stream would take us even more deeply into a rebel country. The last agent we had was in the south. You think he's still there? I couldn't go another kilometer. You're arrested. If you want to go on... No, no, look, I'll, uh, I'll watch at the door. You, uh, you get some rest, huh? I do not wish to seem presumptuous, but although half the world separates you and me, I'm the first one felt something of friendship between us. No presumptions involved. I felt the same thing. So I'll risk speaking frankly. It is not uncommon to be troubled after such an experience. <sighs> Must have been something I ate yesterday. Maybe the water. It's important at this time for one to be honest with oneself. I'm being honest. I told you I must have a bug or something. <laughs> no, it is not. Captain, don't you think I know how I feel? I've been at war two years now, my friend. The first time the same happened to me. The same happens to every man. But the time to think now, the full impact strikes you, so you begin to doubt yourself. Am I so wrong? I've been training over one year to handle things like last night. So you begin to ask yourself, why did I not do more? Look, I just fired blindly at him. What other way was open? Captain, I don't think you understand. I saw six of our people killed, and I did nothing to stop. So you fled screaming in terror? No, you fought well. At great risk, you destroyed the documents you carried. You stayed until it was beyond them. If I could have just been sure I actually did something, if I would have been able to see one of my bullets hitting one of them, I... You enjoy killing. To see the enemy fall. Listen, I hate killing. killing. I told you, I hate killing. I do. I, I hate killing. I hate the whole idea of it. Then is there any logic in what you're saying? If you were Moses, who could part the seas and strike water from the rocks, then you could see through darkness and do other impossible things. But since you're only a soldier, you must be content that you did what was possible.
Bingo, yeah? Yeah, they left. Wait, to me, sir. I'm awfully sorry. You're quite welcome. This is my uncle, Mr. Lee. He's the leader of the village. Well, how do you do? Bingo, yeah? I, uh, I just wanted to thank you. You will have some tea? You are flew from Hangning? Yeah. That's my home. I uh, tend to my uncle here, who has been ill. His wife is dead. He go arrange the boat for you now. Why now? As I told you, there's a government agent in the next village. Is uh, the other woman a liar? Is that why you suspect me? Look, about what I said. Some of which I don't understand. Uh, yes. Uh, what is bottom? <laughs> well, <clears throat> just what the word means. Uh, the bottom of a person. The, uh... <laughs> the feet. Yes. <laughs> you have lovely feet. <laughs> Common among American soldiers that that they are tentative to bottom. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I think you could say that was a safe statement. <laughs> <sighs> hey, um, may I? Of course. You wish to see the boat? You're gonna run. You're gonna scream. That my uncle and friends would would interfere. Does that mean yes? You are a soldier with a gun.
saying about the soldier in the tree. At the time of the year, when the fruit blossoms appear, our farmers wound the tree deeply with their knives. Feeling it is near death, the tree gives more fruit, which is its seed. Men can have the same need, especially a soldier who faces death. God made it this way so that life always continue. I think I read something like that once. A philosopher I studied in class at the academy. A the German, Nietzsche. My own small academy. A school for girls in Hong Kong. Either way, it's a better explanation than I gave. To the other woman? If the world cannot be perfect, at least a small corner can be made into perfection. Is that what the women here believe? That's what I believe. Look, I... Uh, I'm sorry about what happened in there. I am not. In one short moment, I have learned much about you. Are you uh, going back to Hanyang? If you wish me there, you do not wish to see me. Of course I wish to see you. Then I'll be there. Hey, what are you doing? Men have been seen approaching the village. Were they rebels, huh? My uncle is in touch. I better wake the captain. Hey, you go, 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 Lila, Lila. Someone is pulled on us. I heard two farmers talking when they passed behind us. What about the girl, too, yet? She and her uncle went into a hiding. No, no, they're getting a boat ready. Well, there wasn't enough time. Look, they're together. They'll be safe. Come on, we must go. See, these people helped us. Most of the villagers are safe. Come on, we must go. I said, D, I thought there was a government agent south of here. The village of Minba. The is this way. I checked the sun when I came in this morning. Can't fight a whole rebel platoon. Most of the village is safe. The rest we can't help. Come on. so certain now? Well, I'm sorry. It's easy when the sun is low. When it gets you high, see now I why can... infective radio locator system must be found. 
Let us suppose you're here pursuing the enemy. Your radio man has contacted helicopters. But even if you had compass and maps, you still would not be able accurately to direct the landing of troops. Yeah. Captain, uh, let's try this gully. It leads to a stream. Lieutenant, you do not get a face fact. I don't follow that. Well, this is a difficult thing to say, but you, you're coloring your features. They give you way. And your being with me gives you away, too, huh? Soldiers, we must face facts. I am an Asian. Once I've changed into farmer's calico, I could travel without danger of notice. And since my chances are better, I, I think it's important I also carry whatever information you have on the radio locator system. Captain, the charts and diagrams I carry, they'll have to be replaced. But the technical information you carry in your memory is more important, more pressing. We must know the best frequencies, effective range, jamming techniques, how troop deployment is to be affected, all such matters. Hey, uh, we've only traveled a few miles. A few more miles to be safe, then we must sit and discuss this. Happy days, huh? <laughs> oh, I know, I know. About that radio. <laughs> well, we tried a dual system. First, uh, we used our radio as a beacon locator. Using a highly directional circle antenna. You employed twin beacons then to obtain a fix. <laughs> right. A second, we uh, modified our radio slightly to pick up both beacon frequencies simultaneously, each beacon slightly out of phase with the other. In other words, a slave and a master beacon, like in the Loran Air Navigation System. To form a radio grid over the area. <laughs> right. You know, am I crazy, or have I seen that boat before? I've seen that boat. We passed it before. Well, the subject to jamming signals... Which means we could have been traveling in a circle. But, but if we were, we would have noticed a stream, right? The rebel force sent out a proper signal from the old I've radio. seen it. I've seen that boat. No, you're mistaken. This type is quite common in the province. Hey, not us. Me. Lieutenant. Yeah, last night, right after I left the chopper, there was some brush, heavy brush. He just like right over there. Lieutenant! Please hand me your belt and pistol. This. The crash and the attack were as dangerous to me as they were to you. I was near death before I was able to identify myself to them. In a short time, the troops will return with tools and men to take apart the helicopter and transport it to one of our camps. Looks like somebody trying to beat out the dispatch case fire. Is that how you hurt your little hand? The commander of this unit is a stupid man. He stood with his gun on me, arguing while the documents were destroyed. When word came where you were hiding, they wanted to seize you immediately. I had great difficulty convincing them that I could get more information from you in my own way. But disappointed, it failed. I decided to let you escape once I had the information we needed. We are friends. We are the same two people we were this morning. You were concerned at my condition. You cleaned my gun while I slept. I then helped you with your troubled thoughts. Do you doubt that I was sincere then? 
Friendship is too fragile a thing to be counterfeited that easily. To fight for different ideas does not mean we must hate. The history of war has many cases where men fought each other bravely, but still had great respect and affection for the other. And now slowly you will pick up the rock and throw it far behind you. That sort of thing only makes me respect you more, my friend. Friend? Since when is friend a word in your dictionary? I thought the word was comrade. I only came back to my country, wanting for it what I had seen in yours, peace, security, comfort, schools for all children, doctors for all who are ill, things which only a unified people could accomplish. You left out one word, my friend. A unified, free people. By which Americans always mean ballot boxes. We cannot eat ballot boxes. There are other kinds of freedom, too, my friend. Freedom from the hunger which my family knew. Freedom from the disease which killed them. Freedom, freedom from burrowing in paddy mud like an animal until fatigue has made an animal out of you. And under communism? They are winning. To achieve unity, we must first win. Win what? We are not committed to adopt their system. My friend, please listen. Please try to understand. I am no more a trained revolutionist than yourself. What am I doing that is so different from any of your patriots? Do you remember what they stated? Whenever any form of government becomes destructive to these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it. Is your own declaration of independence a lie? It also says that all men are created equal. The Asian mind is different. Oh, come on now. A man is a man. Strong central government suits the will and the need of my people. Sit down! We cannot have government by simple farmers. Well, we did. That's what you said was so great. Or did I, uh, did I misunderstand you, Mr. Washington? Your face gives you away, my friend. Fifty yards. This I can kill a bird in flight. For your own sake. Please believe that. On my terms, I will allow you to escape. Thank you. We have a strange similarity, my friend. Remember? I forget how well I could read your thoughts. <laughs> you know, the strangeness of it just now struck me. What am I thinking, Captain? Am I thinking that you're holding me prisoner? Or how surprised I am that the loyal Captain D is really a member of the rebel movement? Isn't it strange, Captain Miang D? Of the passengers and crew left alive, only two men. A traitor and a stranger. Yeah, the rebels left only two men alive, a traitor and a stranger. We were discussing earlier how two radio beacons phased over a certain area. How large an area? How large a what, Captain? Then drop, drop, drop. Now, now the time again.
Reich! Lieutenant Reich! You cannot win against an automatic weapon! I offer you your life! cannot cause any more deaths. I will throw my weapon between us and walk away. If you want to kill me, you will have to shoot me in the back. Sling and drop it, D. Please. You're my friend. And sling and drop it, D. Lieutenant. In a minute. I'll be all right in a minute. There's a village near here. Ling Sol. A couple of our choppers are over there now. I've got to get back to it. There's a woman there. She tried to help me. That explains what happened back there. The rebels paid that off by burning a place to the ground. I've got to get back there, Captain. All right, we'll swing back that way. <laughs>
to life. It is what one... One makes of it. You know my words. Mm -hmm. And I think I even know what happens next. I don't understand. Neither do I. It's almost as if Captain D was warning me. Bryce? You can't have perfection. It doesn't exist. But Captain D is dead. And I killed him. Because you are a man. Oh, uh, forgive, I'm, I'm so clumsy. <laughs> no, no, it's me. You're wonderful. I'm just a complete fool. <laughs> you know, there's no way it could ever be the same. There's nothing you could ever do that wouldn't be honest, simple, and lovely. Please, I must soak this in water. So that it won't stain? <laughs> well, in this case, it was my own shirt. I do not understand the joke. Well, you see, it was her pants that got stained. The other woman. Yeah. <laughs> that was the joke. Well, I would not be the same. Now, believe me, honey, you couldn't be any more different. Because I am Asian? Because you are you. It's that simple. You Marines can't let the Army handle everything. Miss Sung and I have agreed to grab you and take you... Uh... Oh, Bill, I'm sorry. I, uh, I assume that since you just got into town... Uh, Major Dennis, this is, uh... Her name is, um... Oh, quite all right, quite all right. Well, look, if you and the lady would like me to come downstairs, I... No, no, some other time, some other time. The name is Mrs. William T. Rice. Let him suffer for a while. It's good for the uh, reputation of the Corps. You're sitting on my bottom. Honey, I think it's time that we got uh, straightened out in some terminology. A lesson in English? I will fail. Uh, I don't think so. Oh. No, I, uh, I don't think you're going to fail at all. <laughs> <laughs> 